Hello. Welcome to the next in our podcast series on IFRS 9's impairment requirements. I'm Sandra Thompson. I lead our global accounting technical function for financial instruments. And hi, I'm Mark Randall. I work in our UK accounting technical function where I look after the UK banking practice. In our last podcast, we're going to talk about what is meant by a significant increase in credit risk. And we're going to explore that in a bit more depth today. So just to recap, IFRS 9 is a three-stage model. When a bank originates a loan, it will start in stage one and the bank will book a 12-month expected credit loss. The bank will need, then need to monitor that loan and if at some point there is a significant increase in credit risk, the loan will move into stage two or three and the bank will book a full lifetime credit loss. Therefore, what's a significant increase in credit risk is a key factor in implementing IFRS 9. That's not defined in IFRS 9 and it will be a judgment. In our last podcast, we talked a lot about using PDs to estimate a significant increase in credit risk, but that's not the only approach in the standard. And today we're going to talk a bit more about some qualitative factors that might be looked at, and also what IFRS 9 calls backstop indicators. Just before we get into that, I'm going to talk a bit about how you might group loans. In particular for a retail portfolio with many hundreds of thousands of loans, it's impractical to do the significant increase test on a loan by loan basis. And it's perfectly acceptable to group similar loans. But to do that, the loans do have to have similar credit risk characteristics. And that means they behave the same way in response to credit risk triggers. It's not acceptable to group loans with different credit risk characteristics because by doing that, you might mask a significant increase in some of the loans in the group, and that would not be IFRS 9 compliant. I'll hand over to Mark now, who's going to talk a bit more about qualitative factors. Thanks, Sandra. Yes, so in the IFRS 9, there's a list of 16 different qualitative factors that are set out. For example, an actual or expected significant deterioration in the credit rating of a financial issue or instrument. And in addition, for banks following the Basel Regulators Guide um, or guidance on IFRS 9, there are further six factors to consider. For corporate and wholesale loans, many banks are planning to use their existing watchlist processes to capture and monitor these qualitative factors. If banks are planning to do that, a key step they really need to do is do a gap analysis to compare the existing systems and processes they have versus what IFRS 9 requires. So for example, are all of these 16 list of factors or the relevant ones already captured within the watchlist process? And if they are, what's the governance around that to ensure they're being interpreted consistently to judge whether either individually or in aggregate those qualitative factors indicate a significant increase in credit risk? From a practical point of view, that can be quite complex if you've got individual credit officers making individual judgments using their expert credit knowledge and you want consistency from, time, from one time period to another in how those judgments are being assessed. So performing that analysis and identifying any enhancements required to the process are going to be key. And in practice, when we've had discussions, it, it would seem pretty rare that existing watchlist processes will need no changes whatsoever. Thank you, Mark. Finally, I'm going to talk about what's sometimes called a backstop indicator. IFRS 9 has a rebuttable presumption that when a loan is 30 days past due, there has been a significant increase in credit risk. Now, that is rebuttable, but in order to rebut it, a bank will need sufficient evidence that 30 days is not equivalent to a significant increase in credit risk. And in practice, we think it's going to be very rare that banks actually will look to rebut the presumption. The other thing to say about that backstop is it is a backstop, so it should be a kind of last resort. And in most cases, a bank would expect to identify a significant increase in credit risk before a loan becomes 30 days past due. So just to recap, what's a significant and increase in credit risk is a key judgment to be made under IFRS 9. In practice, banks will look to qualitative and quantitative factors, and also the 30-day rebuttable presumption as a backstop indicator. Also, it's perfectly acceptable to group loans, provided they have similar shared credit risk characteristics. Thank you very much for listening.